Hello, my name is Robert Byrne from the Deutsches Herzzentrum in Munich and I'm delighted to be here at Euro PCR 2015 in Paris. I'm very pleased to be joined by two of the course directors, uh, William Wines from Alst and Stefan Windecker from, from Bern. Uh, we've just heard some very interesting information uh, from the late-breaking clinical trial session here at PCR and we'd like to discuss briefly two studies, uh, Notion and Deflect3. William, maybe I'll start with you. Could you tell us a little bit about uh, Notion? It's a TAVI study, why it's important and what we learned new at uh, the session today. What Dr. Sondergaard presented on behalf of the investigator team was the update two-year results of this trial that is a randomized study comparing TAVI with surgical aortic valve replacement in low-risk patients. That is unique and that's why we think these data are really important. And uh, were these truly low-risk patients because we have had studies of course with inoperable and high-risk patients and were these genuinely broadly selected patients? These patients were um, defined as nearly all comers but the two main entry criteria to remember and that really qualify them as low risk is age, okay, older than 70, and uh, the STS score that was on average around three, which really is indicative of low risk. So these really are low risk patients. Um, Stefan, maybe the primary endpoint they were looking at, uh, what was that endpoint and what did they find? They looked at the composite primary endpoint consisting of death myocardial infarction and stroke. So this is really a clinically important uh, event uh, because all of them may importantly affect the outcome. And the findings now at two years with the update were that in the patients treated with the self-expanding transcatheter valve had an event rate of 15.8% as compared to 18.8% among patients who were treated with a surgical aortic valve uh, replacement. I do think that both the design but also the findings are provocative because they really ask the question whether among low risk patients where we currently have the gold standard of surgery, transcatheter aortic valve implantation may be able to replace that. And this question was asked at a time point with a device we are no longer using that is, the study started in 2009, and in the meantime, we have important iterations in device development. So the study hypothesis then was non-inferiority -inferior, of TAVI against uh, surgery, and you're asking maybe with iterative device improvement nowadays, if we were to conduct this study uh, with modern contemporary devices, would we in fact see superiority? That's the intriguing uh, hypothesis that this, uh, these results are raising. Um, we have data on uh, some of the uh, side effects, like uh, paravalvular leak. Uh, stroke rates were actually numerically somewhat lower in the TAVI group versus surgery. Um, at that time, the rate of pacemaker implantation was higher uh, in the TAVI group. Stroke rates, we're talking about 3.6% uh, in the uh, TAVI group at two years. And this is with the core valve, just to be clear. Sure. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, actually, just talking about stroke, it moves us on very nicely to the second study that we wanted to briefly mention, and that's the DEFLECT-3 study, also a study in TAVI patients. And here, the question the investigators were asking, if I understand rightly, is did cerebral protection devices uh, uh, bring uh, incremental benefit for the patients? Uh, Stefan, can you tell us a little bit more about this study? Yes, so this is also an intriguing study uh, because patients were randomly assigned to cerebral uh, uh, protection using a deflecting device positioned across uh, the supraaortic takeoff of uh, vessels, protecting the entire uh, supracranial uh, uh, circulation among patients undergoing transcatheter aortic valve implantation actually with either the Edward Sapien or the core valve. Mm. And uh, the patients then underwent after the procedure and diffusion weight uh, magnetic resonance imaging of uh, the brain and actually that examination was also uh, repeated after 30 days although a considerable portion of patient was uh, lost to follow-up between that uh, post-procedural scan and the follow-up scan. But the intriguing findings are that uh, after the procedure there was a significant difference in the amount of intracranial lesions 
in the group of uh, patients who were protected by the device, so in this group it was slower as compared to the conventional group. Now this in itself would not be so interesting because that has been shown before, mm -hmm. yeah. but what really this study adds is that for the first time it establishes a link with neurocognitive function. So patients not only underwent brain imaging, but also sophisticated assessment of neurocognitive function. And there was uh, an improved outcome among those patients with fewer lesions who were in the protected, in the deflector protection group. Yeah, that's interesting because we've seen lots of data from diffusion weighted MRI scans after TAVI and we know these lesions occur quite frequently, they're detected uh, quite frequently. Uh, how do we interpret the clinical relevance of uh, these new lesions that we see and does this study move us forward? Um, I would think so and uh, the fact that the detailed, very sensitive imaging technique was used but also correlated with clinical outcomes in terms of uh, one of the important, uh, if not the most important function of the brain, uh, cognitive function, I think is really new. And what's striking to me is, is a sort of paradox. We hear a lot, and we will hear a lot about uh, making TAVI procedures uh, easier, slender uh, TAVI. And it was felt for many years that the use of um, protection devices would actually make the procedure more complex with perhaps not too much of a benefit. Here we have a benefit. Um, the procedure itself seemed to be um, done with rather, you know, easily without making too much, uh, too complex. And um, we have to see this in the perspective of addressing a lower risk population. And put this in light of what we've just discussed about Notion. As we go to um, lower risk people, of course, you want to avoid by all means any side effect, but particularly stroke that has an impact on uh, cognitive function. Well, I think two very important uh, studies, and I think we've learned a lot from these studies today. I'd like to thank you for joining me um, here today. I think if I could sum up, we've learned uh, from the Notion study that uh, a TAVI seems to be non-inferior inferior to uh, surgical aortic valve replacement in a relatively broad, broadly inclusive patient population, and that these findings are durable out to two years. And uh, moreover, the use of uh, protection, cerebral protection devices uh, may now show benefit not only in reduction in ischemic endpoints at imaging, but also offer patients benefit in terms of improved neurocognitive function. And I think there are two important lessons that we can take from today.